My name is Stanley Sword, and I have the pleasure to sit here with Mats Näslund. Hi, nice to meet you. Great to see you. A great hockey player. And uh, it was 50 years ago since you first was on the ice as a three-year-old. Yeah. I started in Timrå where I grew up uh, skating when I was three and played there, uh, organized hockey when I was six. So it's uh, a few years ago. And your father was a blacksmith along with his two brothers. Yeah, he worked uh, as a blacksmith uh, house construction. So he was uh, probably better working with his hands uh, than with his head. So that's probably why I am a carpenter now and not a yeah. scientist. <laughs> but you're a scientist with your hands. You construct the things underneath which we yeah, live our I, lives, I find the uh, I find a lot of solutions for things uh, that probably I got from my father, yeah. And early on you found your, your calling, your, your, your passion, your, your, the, 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 one, the thing we were searching you know, a, a lot of people all our life for. Our, our true north, our, our aiming goal, our... Well, uh, growing up in Timra where I grew up, uh, it was natural to start to play hockey and uh, I st started when I was six as I said and, and uh, developed to be a, a good junior player and a senior player in team room before I moved on but hockey was uh, what I did when uh, all the spare time I had uh, besides school time. Yeah and in those days it was a little bit different from today. Today you have to have you know, scheduled trainings and so on. Yeah, I was, was not as uh, organized. I was probably on the ice or, or playing street hockey about 25, 30 hours a week. And uh, five of those were organized. The rest were just for fun. And I I, I didn't consider that as, as training, but I guess it was a training for the future anyway. Mm. And today, kids of today, What's the best advice you could give them to, to succeed tomorrow? Well, for me, I always, uh, I always had fun practicing, uh, playing games. Uh, uh, to, to not take away the fun part of it. Uh, don't be afraid to, to celebrate and laugh when you make a goal or, or really enjoy it. When you make goals, uh, second is, is, is you have to be, you have to train a lot. You have to uh, take the, the pain when you, you practice and don't give up. And the third advice is probably to listen to uh, surrounding your coach, teammates, uh, even parents sometimes. Uh, you have to listen to everybody and pick up uh, Small ideas, uh, how to score a goal or what to, how to pass a puck or how to be a good friend. Uh, listen a lot to, uh, to your teammates is, is important. And of all the victories you had, you, you won Stanley Cup, you won the Olympic gold, you won the World Cup, you won the Swedish Championship, you won the European Championship. Um, what's the greatest victory along the road? Well, for, the, for me, uh, there is no doubt that winning Stanley Cup in the greatest hockey town in the world, in Montreal, is is is, is the biggest achievement I did. Uh, you play with the same guys for about hundred games, and the final of the Stanley Cup is over seven games. In the World Championship, there it's decided on one or two games. Uh, normally, the semi-final one game, and the final one game that decides who's going to win. But uh, Fighting for uh, for your teammates over 100 games and win the, the big trophy like Stanley Cup, that was the biggest for me. Yeah, and as playing as a forward, you, you, you lead a team. Yeah, well, my goal in every game was to make a point. Uh, I, I, I almost had one point a game. I don't know if I played 800 and 850 games and ended up on maybe 20 points short of uh, average uh, a point a game. Uh, 
that that was my goal as a forward. But I was an offensive forward. I played a lot of power plays. So I was supposed to to get points. I got uh, I got 110 points 1986, and uh, nobody has done that in Montreal since since those days. So that that was my best year individually. And those matches, tell me about it. What what the flow of the game? How do you think, or do you just feel and act, or is it intuition? Yeah. And yeah, read and react was probably what I I did best. Uh, game plans, uh, you had a game plan, but but uh, it's tough to to follow the game plan when the opponent player doesn't do what you expect him to do. So I think every big uh, successful uh, hockey player or soccer player has to. To read and react what the opponent are doing. I guess it's the same thing in, in boxing. Yeah. If the guy is supposed to hit you with the left all the time and suddenly pick you with the right, you have to react. I guess it's the same in hockey. And you played over 20 matches with Wayne Gretzky. Yeah, I guess Wayne Gretzky. Yeah, I I, uh, I consider him being the best player ever. Uh, Maybe one of the early Russians like Shalamov or those guys, but uh, Gretzky uh, was about the same age as my as I was. He played the Junior World Championship against him, and then we played the. When you were nineteen, he was seventeen. Yeah, and uh, the oldest guy was twenty, so he was three years younger, which is very unique. And uh, not too many players play the World Championship that early, so he, he's the greatest player I played with. And against, I would say. You know, we regular people we just see the, the, the match on the TV or on the, on the rink, and and uh, you as a player, what's going on in your head when you meet Wayne Gretzky? Well, I guess you. We put our defensive specialists against him, our best players to defend our own net. So I didn't play in the games. I didn't play that many shifts against Gretzky because. The other team will probably put their best defense, defensive players against me. <laughs> but uh, I guess on the bench I was watching him a little closer. Uh, uh, I wouldn't say admire him, but uh, yeah, probably admire him <laughs> from the bench when I was watching the game. And the game of hockey, is it like a gladiator game? Because you, you're going forward. You are forward, and then they have the back chain. And tell me about these, you know, these, this, this. Yeah, I, I guess it's it's a tough game. Uh, it's a lot of uh, physical play, and uh, uh, but I I I had to depend on my uh, feel for the game and smartness. I guess so I didn't have a chance to get into a nose to nose. Uh, Battles, so I had to outsmart my opponents uh, because of my size. So that's was it but an it's, advantage it's, to be a bit smaller? Uh, no, I think? don't think it's ever been an advantage. But uh, but, uh, but did it make you smarter on the on the? I guess ice? I had to be smart when I was a junior player to take the next step up to a senior player. Because when I when I played my first world championship, I was uh, I think I was. Maybe I, my weight was 61, 62 kilos, and some of the Russian players were probably over 100. So, it's, <laughs> so it was 40 kilos difference. So I had, I guess, I had to be smarter than them. Uh, otherwise, they would have killed me. Yeah. And then you you come to this amazing uh, the uh, hockey town. There's a lawyer calling you when you're 21, and you're quite young, but you have already. Participated in a yeah, Olympics I got and drafted by Montreal, and, and uh, that means that the only team that can uh, sign me was Montreal. And I didn't know I know that Montreal was a huge hockey town, but I didn't know the history of the team. But when I got there, uh, all the players uh, have to learn the history of the team because in the dressing rooms there are pictures of all the Stanley Cup uh, winners, and they they had some players that won Stanley Cup, but 11 times so there's a big tradition and a lot of respect for uh, for the team uh, mm. it, it's 
I, it's it's the best. Uh, it's the biggest franchise of of sports in uh, in North America. It's uh, twenty four times they won the Stanley Cup, and uh, some baseball team and some uh, American football teams have won it uh, twenty times. But uh, as a franchise, it's the biggest uh, winning team in North America. So it's it's uh, it's it's a great to win the Stanley Cup in that city. Yeah. And all the seven years you played, you you reached the uh, the finals. Yeah, we reached the playoff. Uh, we lost uh, in the second round and the third round sometimes, but I made the final twice. We won against Calgary '86, and we lost uh, the finals against Calgary '88. So that's uh, 20 tough games uh, before you can uh, have a chance to 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 win the Stanley Cup. It's uh, It's tough on your body. It's uh, you're pretty tired after uh, those twenty <laughs> yeah. games in four days. You play eighty games in the Grand Series, yeah, and then twenty more. Yeah, I, I, uh, I think those eighty games are uh, physically easier than the last twenty games. Yeah, yeah. And tell me about the culture, the special culture that was developed in your team, and perhaps made it easier to win. Uh, I think. The reason we won the cup was a lot because of all uh, our veteran players that had won it three or four times. Uh, they really picked up their game when it was time for playoff, and you could see they concentrated more and was leading by example, not taking uh, retaliation penalties. And 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 uh, plus we had some young uh, players coming up with their enthusiasm. So I think uh, that mix and that. Um, Team spirit we de- developed that year was the reason we won the Cup '86. Mm. And when you go into the locker room in the morning or in the afternoon, it is. Uh, what what happens there? What's the well? I guess it's a big different going into the locker room in the regular season game and the playoff game. But I think it's important not to be too tense uh, two hours before the game. So I think. Uh, Maybe that was part of leading by example that uh, had a laugh even 20-15 minutes before before the game started just to keep everything relaxed. Uh, it, I don't think it's a good uh, habit to be too concentrated too early because I think it takes a lot of energy out of you. But uh, uh, I was pretty relaxed uh, until we got on the warm-up. 40 minutes before the game, then I started to to get the adrenaline going and and really concentrate. And I think that was important over 100 100 games. You can't you couldn't get fired up too early. Ah, and what made you a great player? Well, what made me a, a great player? Your faithful player. wife. For, yeah. For, for, well, four years almost now. Yeah. Well, I, the whole concept, of course, with. Uh, a family that backed you up, a wife that accepted uh, my career, and uh, and beside that, on the ice, I guess it was my speed and my my knowledge for the game that that made me uh, survive eight years in in Canada. And do you think you're born with that, or is it achieved along the way? Uh, you, you have to be born with uh, the right genetic. Uh, background. My my father played hockey, and I guess my mother was not a good athlete. But I guess she was. She probably had the right heart for uh, for me to get an athlete's heart. And uh, but then you have to practice, and then you have to to be ready to sacrifice. Uh, but um, I guess uh, having parents that gives you the the right genetic tools, I think it's pretty important. Yeah. And that special camaraderie that you develop among the among the, your teammates. Well, I guess you winning teams is is, is, is always good camaraderie, and uh, uh, I don't know why, but uh, after after you won a lot of games, you you probably find your teammates being better friends, but. If you're not good friends within the group, you don't win uh, big trophies either. I think uh, it's very important that the leader 
in the team or leading by example and the good example if that if you have five six guys that don't want to they take shortcuts they might bring beer before the game and you get seven guys and eight guys and nine guys doing the same thing then you don't win anything huh. so the the leader within the group has to be very strong and and uh, be stronger than the guys that really don't understand how much it takes to win is it like a wolf pack i guess so i don't know <laughs> but i guess so you need i guess if you're going to survive as a wolf i need you need the right leaders i guess and for you it was almost always more important with with the with a leader within the team than the coach yeah for sure uh i play with some good leaders uh in Sweden and especially in Canada our team captain Bob Gainey was a leader like that and we had a defenseman named Larry Robinson that was uh, was a great leader by example and great leaders on the ice and and uh, I mean the coach can tell you certain things that helps you in the games but you need the guys on the ice uh, taking the torch and, and show you how to do it and that that's always been more important for me and I think that's that's what I was too, uh, especially my last four or five years. So I, I knew what it took to win trophies. And is it possible to replace the friendship in the locker room and the, the adrenaline on the ice after you stop playing hockey? Uh, I I haven't found the thrills really. I had race horses, uh, trotters that. When they raced, I got that thrill and that uh, adrenaline. I don't have that anymore, but uh, uh, I, don't, I haven't found that thrill in any other thing than hockey. Uh -huh. And along the way there, you, you, you work with the Canadians for eight years. Yeah. It's a long time. You, you buy a house, you... Yeah. raise a child in, in Canada yeah with your wife. for us it was important to find uh, <clears throat> find a home renting uh, year after year I don't think we would have uh, enjoyed it as much uh, now we had a home that was that was our that was worth uh, fixing up and uh, sawing curtains for my wife I guess or, or for me uh, changing the floors so I think for us it was important to find the base for mm. us. And in Canada you also have your best coach along the way. Yeah, I had a coach, uh, his name is Jacques Lamer and he's been a successful coach since I left too and uh, he, he he knew the game, he he respected him so if he told you some uh, some tricks you, you really listened to him because you know he, he was he knew what he was talking about. So I, uh, he's a coach that I respected the most. And is it possible for a, for a good coach to to change or break the habits of a you know of a mediocre team? Is it is it? Yeah, possible? I think uh, I think a little bit. But uh, if the coach get everybody to believe in what he says, uh, a mediocre team can probably win the trophies. But I still think that. The guys that are on the turf or on the ice are uh, the most important. Yeah. And then you go to Switzerland. Yeah. I went to Lugano. Uh, uh, I had a two-year contract, but we lost the finals in uh, three close games. And and uh, me and my uh, friend uh, Magnus Svensson got uh, fired. And that's why I came back to Sweden and Malmö. Yeah. yeah, and that was a good shift. Yeah, it was a good shift. <laughs> because you... I won the World Championship and Olympics and a couple of Swedish Championships and um, and the European Championship after that. So I think I was the winner of that. And you won the World Cup in, in Helsinki, in Finland. Yeah, 91. Tell me about that, uh, the mixture of the team... Well, we had a lot of uh, experienced players uh, that played the, like me eight, nine years in, in Canada. And we had young stars coming up. Uh, that was Mats Sundin's first championship and uh, Niklas Lidstrom's first championship. And their, I guess their enthusiasm and our, 
our experience uh, was a big key to that win. Uh, and when you mix through, it's like when you mix through a good blend of coffee or, or, or a wine or a, uh, a blended whiskey or something. I guess uh, the coaches that picks the team uh, has to uh, to get a good mix. Uh, I guess you, you need good defensive player and good offensive player, and maybe maybe they should think of getting younger players and older players at the same time. But because that mix uh, really, their enthusiasm pushes the older guys for sure. I know that. And then you go on to to our second neighbor country here in Sweden, Norway, to Lillehammer. Yeah, 94. Lillehammer was my last uh, tournament in the national team and the same thing, we had young, young good players coming up, uh, Peter Forsberg and uh, Kenny Jönsson uh, was two of them and Håkan Loeb, myself and uh, Thomas Jönsson that had Stanley Cups before uh, got together and I think the same thing there, we, we pushed uh, They pushed us uh, and we, we held them back maybe with our uh, discipline and, uh, and, uh, and experience, I guess. So that was a good mixer too. Plus mm. a lot of luck, I guess. <laughs> luck is all we need. Well, if you work hard, you get more luck than... Uh... <laughs> yeah. And then you go on as a coach yourself. For a couple of years. Yeah, I coached a junior team here in, in, in Malmö and then... Uh, i got a call from my friend Bengt uh, Gustafsson that uh, he wanted me as a team manager for the natural team. So I came back five years with the natural team and I also won a world championship and uh, Olympic gold there. But uh, in that Turin. was... What's that? In, in Turin. In Turin, yeah. yeah. That Olympics. was uh, probably the biggest win the Swedish natural team had done because all the NHL players was there. and uh, But... Uh, i didn't have a big part of that. I had a big part of uh, uh, the tournaments I won when I was a player, but I have a very, very small part uh, as a as a team manager. So, when you think of the word motivation, what do you what do you think of then? Words, I don't. Words are tough for me. I don't know why I like to win and why I get. Uh, i don't get as pissed off now when I lose, but <laughs> I I know that people can see on my eyes when I uh, when I when I lose. Uh, but do you have to hate to lose no, to become I, a great I athlete? I guess I well, was using w- just words. I don't know if that means. I guess you have to love to win more than hate to lose. I don't know. I think that's more important to love to win. And. Hockey in in fifty years from now, you began fifty years ago. Where do you <laughs> think it will? Where will it end up in fifty years from now? I I think it will probably be the same. You have to, you have to be a good skater. And you have to be a have to have a good knowledge of the game. Physically, I don't think they can be any better. And equipment, I don't think it will be any better either. So I think hockey. Uh, i think the last 50 years hockey has progressed more than it will do the next 50 years, I think. And what's what's the change? Is is more money now? It's it's is it less player joy? Is it what's the difference uh, that, now between well, that, when you played? Uh, that I don't know. It's more uh, if it's more uh, you probably you play more for for uh, for yourself and more for the next contract now than we did. But that's Probably what the old farts said when I was uh, starting to play that we were only thinking ourselves too. Uh, we usually say it's better. Uh, it was better before, but I'm not sure that that's the true. But we like to think so. We were younger before. We were younger before. That's true. Yeah. yeah. And now you're holding another stick. Well, I enjoy playing golf. I play. I'm, I'm not uh, as uh, crazy as I was in hockey, but uh, golf is my. Uh, Well, it's close to passion, but uh, I enjoy playing golf with my uh, friends and my wife and my my uh, son and hopefully my grandkids the next five years. You play three to four times a week? Well, I play uh, 18 holes once and maybe three more times. 
uh, nine holes. And then you play some veteran hockey? Yeah, I play some exhibition veteran hockey, about five, six games a year. And I've been to Russia and uh, Canada and the States this year. So that's keep me motivated to stay uh, a little bit in shape. Yeah. Thanks for your motivation. Thank you very and much. The best of luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks.